this video, I would like to show you how to use the extruder. The extruder that I am using is a North Star extruder. The North Star Company has made this. Um, I have a little instruction that is my own handwriting there to warn my students to make sure that they allow time to clean up. Um, the extruder has the handle up here at the top with a little cushy grip. And then it has the plunger, which is basically made of some sort of a plastic material. The uh, plunger is going to be what's going to uh, push the clay down. And then down here, it has these brackets uh, on either side with uh, a little bolt that has a, a recessed hole for an Allen wrench. And this uh, blue uh, part, the, the bottom of the bracket, that holds the dies in place. And then the dies are right here. Now the Nor North Star extruder package that I bought is many, many years old. It's probably, I don't know, at least 15, maybe 18 years old. And uh, it, it comes with a variety of dies of different shapes. Uh, most often I just use the circular dies if I am coil building, but they even have some like strap type dies, square dies, uh, hex, uh, hexagonal dies. Um, you can see that one side is uh, totally flat and the other side is beveled. The beveled side allows the clay to kind of gently go in um, a little bit more easily. Now, the ones that have multiple holes have a, a, a little blank that you put over it to cover up the other holes. So it's gonna direct all the clay going into that one particular hole. Um, I also have some ho hollow dies. This will create a hollow extrusion with just a small wall. And you can see how this is. It actually has um, the little metal uh, holder in there. I will show you at uh, that uh, in a little bit. I'm going to start off by showing you how to use the normal die. Okay, and this is, uh, it kind of wiggles in there. It's a rather tight fit. It does actually kind of bump up against these a little bit. Um, so it is a pretty tight fit. When you are going to screw it, you kind of have to hold it in place. Now you can see there's a gap here. This does definitely have to be tightened. I'm going to use my I'm going to use my little Allen wrench that I have, and um, the the way that this North Star extruder comes, you do have to kind of use the Allen wrench. Um, I once lost one of these, and I had to end up by uh, using a regular wrench. It was a pain. Unfortunately, butt. with the design of this, you can't really use a ratchet. Um, I'm not sure, hoping that maybe North Star has changed their design since this was made because this is so close right in there. You can't fit a ratchet up on the end if you had um, a, a nut end on it. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. Now, I've made sure that this is very, very snug. If it's not tight and you have a gap, you're gonna have clay that oozes out. Um, and we can take a look in here and you can see what's going on in there. You can see my students didn't clean it well the last time. But when you look down in there, you can see that we only have one open hole. The rest of those have been covered up and uh, all the clay is gonna be forced through there. Now, as far as the clay goes, I have pre-wedged uh, and kind of formed my clay into uh, blocks that will hopefully fit down in there. If they're a little bit big, I may have to just uh, make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And I'm gonna, gonna lift, lift up, up on this. Ouch. And I'm gonna insert that down in there. All right, so I have lifted up uh, on the plunger. I have inserted my clay down in there, and I do have to make sure that this is pushed in firmly. Now, what I have prepped underneath this is I do have a tray. Now, mine is hanging on a wall. Uh, it doesn't have a table underneath it or anything, but I usually use a small trash can and a tray underneath there. So as I push down on the clay, I push down on this, 
the clay will come out and it just goes on the tray. And then you can just lift up and add more clay and keep it going. When you're done, you can just kind of trim off the coil and now you can have a plate full of coils that you can use to build. Uh, for my students, I usually tell them if they uh, want to make a lot of extra coils beyond what they need in any given day, they need to maybe put a damp towel over it and then bag it up tight. So cleaning it is very, very important. The cleaning part, I usually tell my students it takes about 10 minutes. If uh, a pair of students are using it, then by all means clean up together and it goes a little bit faster. So I have to first remove or loosen, I should say, I first have to loosen my bolts enough that I can slide out the die and the little black blank rubber cover. There we go. That one's loosened. I have to loosen this side. Again, would be a lot easier if you could use a ratchet, but there's not enough room the way that this is attached to get a ratchet up in there. Okay. Now, to get this out, I do need to kind of break the seal there. If I can push this clay up a little bit, there we go. And then I'm going to peel this off. Now I do have a little bit of extra clay. There's usually about an inch that just is not possible for it to push through, which again, perhaps they have changed their design since this was purchased. But you can see I've got a good inch of a clay, inch of clay left. Of course, if I added to it, uh, that would be usable again. Now to clean this, I usually tell my students to put another tray underneath it with a water bucket and a sponge, and you're going to sponge off the whole thing, clean the dies at the sink, clean the plunger, clean the walls. So for this next uh, process, I would like to show you how you can do a hollow extrusion. For this, I have to remove one, one of the bolts because I need to be able to swing this out of the way. And the other one, I'm going to loosen up a little bit more just to get this a little bit lower. There we go. Now. For this, I am going to, uh, you will already have taken and threaded your uh, hollow part of the die onto the, the little stem, the threaded stem there, and then put the nut on there and tighten that down with uh, a wrench. I went ahead and I've, I've done that. This was actually the one that I used the last time I used the hollow extrusion. So this is what it looks like. The one that I'm doing, you can see it's got a groove in one side and the little metal uh, bands will fit in there and it fits in there just like that. The metal part will go up. We'll position the metal part on the top side because it looks like a Z and I'm going to first of all start one side of the bolt or I should say one of the bolts on one side. And let me grab the second bolt and start this. And I want to be sure that the Z brace has not popped out, which I'm still in the right spot. Got to make sure that that's actually in the little groove. There we go. Z brace has to be in the groove. is down in there if you can see that and the hole is just the uh, soft if your clay is kind of on the uh, dry side or something you're gonna have some difficulty the clay has to be forced to join itself back together again 
Okay, so I'm going to drop this in and oh, kind of pound that down just a little bit to get the brace or the plunger there on top. There we go. Do I want a hollow extrusion? Well, hollow extrusions can be really fun if you're going to make uh, any sort of thing that you want a hollow wall with. I actually had a you know, a girl do a lovely donut pot uh, with with the hollow extrusion. Now, as it comes through, again, you can see that this is hollow. When you go to, oops, and, and not mesh together well, maybe there's a dry chunk or something in there that's stopping it. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, if you have an area like that, you know, you can just re-wedge that, put it back in. Okay. Gonna trim that off. Yeah, definitely have a split there. Okay, but this this one part is nice and hollow. So depending on how much you need, just keep on feeding your clay in there. came out. There we go. And I continued on with the hollow coil. There we go. And if you're careful when you break it off, you can usually keep it uh, in that nice um, hollow form. So if you just kind of set them to the side, there I've got a couple of, couple of hollow coils right there. Once I pretty much got the chunks of clay off, I'm going to take this to the sink and I'm going to clean this up. The bucket is down underneath and it's going to catch any water that drips. I hope that you have found this helpful in how to use the North Star Extruder and make coils and hollow extrusions.